Farm, Food, and Fun with Farmer Larry, Miss Lynn, and Sydney and Paisley. Today we're cooking with kids. I can't wait. These are two of our favorite girls. See you in a few minutes. Farm Food and Fun with Farmer Larry, Miss Lynn, and two of our favorites, Sydney and Paisley. Today we're cooking with kids. It's one of our favorite things to do here on the farm. We love cooking with kids, especially these two girls. So what are we making today? Homemade macaroni and cheese and mini apple pies. Mini apple pies. Do you like apple pie? Good. <laughs> Good. And today we're going to be talking about all the ingredients we need to make all those fun things for kids, how easy it is for kids to cook in the kitchen, how important it is for kids to cook in the kitchen. We're going to have our own aprons, our own utensils, kid friendly, and we're going to have some questions and answers so you can ask us all about cooking from parents and children. So we'll be back in a minute. Farm Food and Fun with Farmer Larry, Miss Lynn, and Sydney and Paisley. Today we're cooking with kids. It's one of our most favorite things to do. Right, Farmer Larry? That's right. We love kids. How many times have we cooked together? A bunch. A bunch, a bunch. So today we're going to teach parents how important it is to cook with their kids because so many math skills, so many science skills, and it's fun, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So today we're making one of the girls' favorites, which is apple pie. But instead of making gigantic pies, we're going to make some mini pies so she can give them away to all their friends. The first thing we always talk about when we're cooking with kids is make sure you have child-friendly utensils. All right, so these are our measuring cups for solids, and these are our measuring spoons. So we all have our own aprons, which is really important for kids to have their own gear for cooking, right? So we're going to start out by making apple pie. And the first thing we always tell our cooking kids is mise en place, which means... Always be prepared. Be prepared, that's right. That means get everything together for the recipe before you start, right? right? Because sometimes the recipe will not wait for you to run to the store and get an egg or run out to the chicken coop, right? So today we're going to get everything ready. We've got our bowls ready. So we've got our bowl. Farmer Larry's got his wooden spoon. So we're going to go ahead and measure everything out into these little bowls so we know what it is before we mix it together. Now apple pie is so easy. In fact, we're using Farmer Larry's mom's recipe today, which is so special. And we're going to use a special apple called a Granny Smith. And this is a green apple and it's kind of tart. You will get to taste it a little bit later. It's kind of tart, but it makes one of the best apple pies ever. So we're going to take out three apples. So three apples. And then we're going to measure out some sugar, and don't worry, you can get the recipe at home too. So we're going to measure out some sugar, so let's get our third a cup measuring cup, and we're going to measure out some sugar, and we'll put it in this little bowl. Why don't you measure out the sugar farmer, Larry, for them. And we've got cinnamon. Now what is it about cinnamon that's really tasty? It's good in stuff, but it's not good by itself. No, not by itself. If you taste it, it smells really good though, doesn't it? Mmm. Yeah. So we like to mix it with sugar, right girls? Right. So we've got, we just poured a little bit of cinnamon into the bowl because we've discovered that it's easier to measure things with children when they measure out of a small bowl instead of a container. So we're going to go ahead and put our sugar in. Good job. Good job, Farmer Larry. <laughs> and then we're going to get one half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then Farmer Larry, if you will let Miss Paisley get the flour. We're going to do a quarter cup of flour so she can scoop that out. And Paisley, can you show them how we do it? When we have our measuring spoons, one of the important thing to do with kids is to use your leveler. What's your leveler? Yeah, this is our leveler. We have all washed our hands ahead of time and so we're using our leveler to make sure it's level. Fabulous. And we're going to put it right in here, half a teaspoon of that. And we've got our butter all ready to go, four tablespoons of butter, and we're going to get an egg. So, well, we would like the flour, Miss Lynn. We'll put the flour right in, right, uh, let's put it, hey, I've got another bowl. Let's put it in this bowl. 
Good job. So you leveled it all out, right? Super. Yeah, now we've got job. all our things together. So let's check our list. Do we have our three apples? Yes. yes. Do we have our sugar, yes. cinnamon, flour, butter, and now all we need is our egg. So let's talk about eggs. You want to? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So, Farmer Larry, while we're talking, would you like to go ahead and start peeling our apples? I will. We can all try. We can try to peel. Peeling's not so easy for kids, but we let them, always let them have a turn trying, right? So we're going to take the peeler, mm -hmm. and we're going to turn it on its side, and we're going to peel like this, just like this. Okay. Yeah. And we'll just put those peels right in here. Now, our peels don't get wasted, right? Because where yeah. do they go? To our animals. Who's, who's our favorite animal that likes apples? Uh, Prince Caspian. Prince Caspian and her horse. So we'll start off. So we like to let them try. Remember, this is a sharp utensil, so we always have to monitor and supervise kids. And then we're going to let Farmer Larry do the rest, okay? Because we're going to talk about eggs. So who would like to crack an egg for me? me. Yay! Let me tell you, children love cracking eggs. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move all this out of the way, right? And we're going to practice cracking eggs. I've got two types of eggs here. Can you see? Two mm -hmm. types of eggs. We've got commercial eggs, which are in a styrofoam tray, which we don't really like styrofoam, do we? No, because it never dissolves, but we do use it. And they're white. Paisley, can you open your eggs up? What color are they? Oh, look, those are pasture-raised eggs. Look what color they are. Brown. So when we use eggs, sometimes we have to buy the white eggs because we might not have our own chickens, but when you can, you want to get the best quality ingredients you can. So, I'm going to let each of you girls crack an egg. The important thing about cracking an egg for kids is they need to be able to crack it into a cup so we can practice not getting our shells in there. All right, so let's take an egg out, and I'm going to show you the difference in the, in the, in the uh, eggs. First of all, a farm-raised egg it's this brown one, right? You'll very rarely see commercial eggs that are brown, so we know those are from a farm. And what I want you to do is show them how you can crack it. You can just start right there, crack it on the side, right? Take your two fingers, pull apart. Hey, fantastic! And we're going to put our eggshell right here. So if the egg breaks, it doesn't matter. We do need to get a towel, though. So let me step down and get you a towel. Sorry. That's part of the egg taste. Yeah. So what we have to do with kids is we have to make sure the egg is good, and we have to make sure there's no shells in there. How we do, Paisley? Good. Good. Okay. Now we're going to take our commercial white egg, and we're going to crack it. Ready? So we're going to crack it, put our two fingers together, open up. Oh my goodness, I do see a difference. Do you? Mm -hmm. Let's look. So we've got our farm egg, we've got our commercial egg, kind of pale kind of pale. And we've got our farm egg. Do you see the difference? What's yeah. the difference, girls? This different. one, this is like round, and this one's like, like, they're different colors. They're different yeah. colors. You know why they're different colors? You know why? Because this chicken ate a lot of good stuff. And this chicken didn't get, he kind of got more junk food. Mm -hmm. So that's why our farm egg is much better for us. Do you see how golden it is? Mm -hmm. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to put our eggs off to the side, is we're going to crack up our eggshells. Would you do that for me, Paisley? Just take your hand and crack them up. Because we, on the farm, use everything, right? Yeah. So these eggs are going to go back into our garden and help our plants grow. So we like to let kids just take them and crack them. Okay, how are we coming on our apples, Farmer Larry? We're getting there. All right, fantastic. I have peeled them, and now I'm using this special tool. It's an apple corer. It does a wonderful job of taking the center right out of the apple. So all you have is the meat of the apple left. Now we're always careful with children when we cook with them. If there's anything sharp involved, we always supervise. We make sure they're old enough to use it. So Farmer Larry is going to show us one great thing that we do as adults, and we can watch him do it. It's really wonderful. It's called a mandolin, and a mandolin is something that cuts things really thin because the best apple pies are with really thin apples. So you're ready to see about you ready to see the mandolin? Yeah. All right, girls. Here we go. Girls, this is a very important tool for the kitchen. It's called a mandolin. And what it does is it makes very thin slices. And we're gonna use it today to slice our apples. I have peeled the apple and cored it. And all we have left is the meat of the apple that's gonna go into our apple pie. Use this tool to make real thin slices. 
but it's kind of dangerous, so you have to be careful. And you know the rule, safety first, right? Right, so we're gonna watch, right, Farmer Larry? So we put the apple on this handle, and we slide it in this hole, and all we do is slide it back and forth. And that makes real nice, fine, thin slices. And we go back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth, and pretty soon, you after have big just, muscles. After one minute, look what we have. We have real thin sliced apples that'll be perfect for our apple pies. Look at that. Fantastic. Now, one thing that we always teach kids is we have to taste as we go. So would you like a taste? Mm -hmm. Let's take a, a slice of apple out. It's very thin. We'll examine it, right? And it looks very thin. Look how thin it is. And now we're going to taste it. Ready? Mmm, is it good? Really good. Mmm, it's kind of tart though, isn't it? Mm. Ooh, good thing we're adding some sugar. All right, so Farmer Larry's gonna finish up the mandolin apples. We're gonna finish our snack and we'll be right back. Okay, we've got our apple sliced really thin, right girls? Right. And we're gonna take our sugar and our cinnamon and mix it together. And then we're gonna just pour it over the apples and then Farmer Larry's gonna mix those in for us while we work on our dough. So we have our dough, our pie crust already made in it right here. And as we always teach the girls, what do we have to, and kids, we have to put a little bit of flour on the edge of our board because dough gets really what? Sticky. Sticky, right. So whenever it gets too sticky, we just sprinkle, put, it, sprinkle on. it on. Okay, and everybody has their own rolling pin, which is really important. These are great kids' rolling pins, and this is just a dowel roll that you can take and cut just to the mates to the right size. All right, so here's how we use a rolling pin. A lot of adults don't even know how to do this. When we use a rolling pin, we wanna put our fingers right in the middle, and wherever you apply pressure is where it rolls out thinner. Okay, you wanna try it? So we're gonna roll it out just a little bit because we wanna cut a nice, thin pie shell, right? And even though it's the shape of a big pie, we're gonna make miniature pies. There you go. And sometimes you have to get up on your tippy toes, right? That gives you more pressure to roll it out. Good job. We'll keep it kind of on our board here. And then that looks great. Okay, so these are the shapes that we're gonna make. You can buy these little pie tins almost anywhere. But now, how are we gonna put the pie shell in here? What are we gonna use for a pie cutter router, a pastry cutter router, do you know? Guess what? Miss Lynn has these bowls right here, and what we're gonna use, this is gonna be our pie shape. We kinda of went around and figured out, well, this will be good. So you don't have to have just super special tools. You can use almost anything. Here's what we're gonna do. Farmer Larry, if you'll get one more of these, we're gonna put this on our dough, and we're gonna twist it just a little bit, just like we would a pie, um, a cookie cutter, right? Okay. And then we're gonna take this off and it leaves a circle, right? And you just tear around the circle very gently. You wanna go ahead and try that? Now we've oiled these little pie pans. That's really important because we don't want our dough to stick. Whenever you talk about dough, you need to think sticky, right? So we're gonna go ahead and once we cut the circle out, we're gonna put it right inside. <laughs> Good job. Right inside our pie pan. Just put it, plop it right in. That's an official culinary word, plop. And we'll push it down. And we're gonna make a couple of these, so you can go ahead, yeah, just squish it down to the bottom, super. So this is our mini pie, and we're gonna do another one. Gotta do another, we're gonna actually do four, four of these, so go ahead and take your bowl, and I'll show you what we're gonna do if we run out of dough. And you know what, we wanted to be really careful we put it really close together, but it doesn't matter, because we're gonna take this dough when it's done and re-roll it. That's the great thing about pastry dough, is you can re-roll it um, more than once. You can't always do that. So it's, there you go. Cut it. Beautiful. And just put it, put it down in there. Now why, if we're going to make two, do we need four things of dough? Because we're going to put something on top, right? Because mm -hmm. our, our um, apple pie has to have a lid. Or doesn't have to, but it just makes it that much better. So we're going to go ahead and put those in. Super job. And once you've got it rolled out, how are we going to roll out two more? Any ideas? Refolded. Refolded, that's right. Dough is great. So we're going to push it back together. We're going to use our rolling pins and roll it out. Flatten it out again. And then Farmer Larry, if you will get a sharp knife, I'm going to show you how we're going to make this pie just beautiful. Well, actually, you might even not even need the sharp knife because this is so easy. So you want the pie crust to hang over just a little bit because we want to put the top on. We're going to make a decoration, okay? Because you know what? 
important about food? It needs to be pretty, right? right. That's what Miss Lynn says. It's got to be pretty. So we're going to go ahead. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and flatten her out. We we'll get our pie shells ready and ready to go in the oven. We're going to bake this at 400 degrees for 40. Well. 30 to 40 minutes. Now, if a recipe says bake it at 30 minutes, I always go a little bit lighter and maybe go just a few minutes shorter because I would rather have, I'd rather peek in and take a look at it and have it not done than overdone. So remember that about a recipe. A recipe yeah, is just a way to begin. So you can always change it just a little bit. So we've got our, there we go. We're going to take one more and we're going to cut it out. While they're cutting this out for Larry, can you get our apples? We're going to add our flour to the top. And the flour is actually just going to absorb all the, all the moisture in the apples. If your apples are too wet, then you're going to have a really slushy pie. So we're going to add that flour right to the top, and we're going to mix it into our apples. And then we'll be ready to go. Whoops, you need your bowl back. Yes. So as you can see, it's really fun making pie, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of fun and super tasty. These are great little teacher gifts, all kinds of, you can make these at Christmas time and do all kinds of flavors. What other thing could you make besides apple pie? How about cherry pie. cherry pie? What other pie? Strawberry pie. Strawberry pie. Wow, we're really getting creative now. And that's what we want to do. When you cook with kids, you need them to let them just be creative. All right, so go ahead. We need four, right? We're going to put two of them off to the side because that's going to be our lid. Flatten one when you more. get, and we're going to flatten one more. So this is a great amount of dough, and you can make four really easily shells for that. So we'll put it off to the side. Super. We'll roll it out again. So now we're going to, it's called pile it on. So the great thing about apple pie is we're just going to put all the apples in a pile right inside. It's already got our sugar, our cinnamon, our flour in it. Whoop. And if you have a hole in your dough, what do we do? Just pinch off a piece and add more. And add more. Right. Doing a great job. Yay. So we are ready to rock and roll. So Farmer Larry, if you will, will take our last little bit, good idea, a little flour on top, can't hurt, right? Especially if it's getting sticky. And then we're going to just cut our last one. Ready? And twist. Whoops. And then all our extra dough, well, we'll figure out something to do with it, right? Because we don't waste anything at, far at the farm. All right, so we'll cut it out. Put that off to the side, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our little pans and we're going to dig into that apple, and we're going to take a handful of apple and plop it into your pie shell, okay? Remember when you're working with kids to make sure that they're having fun, they're enjoying things, and they get to do as much as they can by themselves. That's really important because one of these days they're going to be cooking for you. So make sure you teach them well. Okay, so we're finishing up our, right we're there, finishing up, so take it, and we'll just take a handful and put it, we want it to be really loaded with apples, so all of this is gonna fit into these four. We want it to really be heaped up because when we put our top on, it's gonna be beautiful, okay? So big handfuls, this is why we wash our hands before we do any cooking, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, big handfuls, one more handful. Ready? Okay, good. And Paisley's got her too. You want to get your two? Oh, we've got lots left, guys. Want to pile it on? Pile it on. Make it. This is called a, a deep dish pie pan, mini pie pan. <laughs> so we put it in. Yep, you don't have, you have to push it down. You can just put it right in there. It's already got our cinnamon and sugar on it. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to, that's good. Great. We're going to put this lid right on top, okay? So just put your lid on top. Ready? And I'm going to show you how we're going to make it pretty. We're going to take and we're going to Squish our little sides together. Remember when it cooks, it's got to be seen, sealed together just a little bit. So we just take our fingers and make a little pie crust just around the edge. You can do all kinds of decorations you want to, but what you need to do is make sure it's seamed really well. And then, I mean, you could fold it up if you want to and do a little pinch, whatever you want to do, right? It's your design. The other thing we do when we're cooking with kids is we let them choose what to do because they are way more creative than we are. So that's, that's, they'll come up with something brand new, right? All right, so the last thing we have to do for our pie before we put it in the oven is we have to let it vent. Apples get really hot and steamy when they're cooking. It's, oh, look at Farmer Larry's looks different. Look, we all look different, don't we? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our sharp knife that we just had and we're going to cut some little lines in it, okay? So that the steam from the apples can vent out and have room to 
to kind of expand. Now, sharp knives, we always want to be careful with. So you tell me what design you want. I'm going to do about four little pricks right here in the dough, just like the way you used to see them in old magazines where they always had the pricks in them. How about we get some forks? That would be fabulous. Mm -hmm. So we could use forks too, couldn't we, to prick the dough. So we'll go ahead, take a fork, and let's see what we can do with that fork. There you go. Beautiful. All we want to do is just go, make, some, make some designs in it, right? So, Cindy, you'll know which one is yours. Sometimes we, did, we put our initials in it with a fork, don't we? Yeah. Yes. We have lots of kids cooking. So all you need to do is just make sure it goes right through the dough. Perfect. Any design you want. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this on a baking tray and pop it in the oven for about 30 minutes, and it'll be beautiful. Are you ready to see how it's going to turn out? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go. And here we are, girls. Be careful of the pan. Oh, let's put hot, Miss Lynn, on. hot. All right, so what we're going to do is we've let them cool off a little bit. We're going to go ahead and take them. Let's take one off of here and one off of here, and we'll move that over to the side. And they'll come out of the pan really easy because we, what did we do? We sprayed the pan, right? Mm -hmm. I said really easy, so we're just going to put them right there. Beautiful. Just peel it off, right? And it'll come out. And you can reuse these pans if you want to. Some can be reused, some not so much, but that's okay. And so here are our apple pies. Oh my gosh. Do you think they smell delicious? Mmm, yes. Mm. All right. So just so you know, everybody can make an apple pie, right? Yeah. All right. Do we have fun? Yes. High five. Yay. Farm Food and Fun with Farmer Larry, Miss Lynn, Sydney, and Paisley. And, and what are we making today? Oh my gosh, we're making one of our kiddos' favorite, which is... Homemade Mac macaroni and cheese. Right? Right. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to make it in a muffin pan. It's a little bit different, but it's really easy for kids to make. We're going to use two different types of measuring cups. This one is for solids or liquids? Liquids. liquids. Right, liquids. And we have to hold it up. This is really important. This is for solids right so today we're gonna make mac and cheese it's so easy and I gotta tell you it is super super yummy right right all right so the first thing we have to do is we have to get everything we need together right it's called maison place and it means be prepared be prepared right be prepared so what we're gonna do is we're gonna melt some butter in just a minute we just need this much butter just a little bit of butter and we're gonna Add some flour. We need two tablespoons of flour. So we're getting out our kid-friendly um, tools, and she's going to read how we need one tablespoon, two tablespoons. This is improving skills. So make sure your kids, there you go, there's a big one. So what's bigger, tablespoon or teaspoon? Tablespoon. Because a table is bigger than a tea, right? We're going to use our leveler to level it out. Super. We've got clean hands, and we're going to put two of those big guys in there. So go ahead. One. I love teamwork. We love How many teamwork. How do we need, Miss We Lynn? need, oh, wait a minute, two tablespoons. That two tablespoons. That actually is a two tablespoon measuring oh spoon. Oh my gosh, so fabulous. We only need, one, so of we only need one of those. Fantastic. All right, so we've got all the flour we need. We have our butter. We're going to need one cup of milk. So let me grab the milk out of the fridge. And we're going to need one cup of milk. You can use any kind of milk you want. We like 2% milk just because. And so what we're going to do is you have to get down to eye level. Everybody get down low you put your finger on it paisley you pour okay. now remember kids can pour too so don't uh, yeah you don't have to help them too much but just be careful and safety oh. first we're going to hold our finger where we need to see it she's going to keep pouring keep pouring and when we get to the line we're going to say stop right pour 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 see how careful she's being that's because she's been in the kitchen before right Good job. So you have to get down low to see. Everybody get down low. Is that going to meet our one cup? Looks yeah. like it. So we can put our, our milk out of the way. The other thing we're going to need is some salt and pepper, right? Okay. So we like to keep salt and pepper in little containers like this. It's easier to scoop out for kids. So let's see. We need one half a teaspoon. Can you find your half a teaspoon? Different colors. The great thing about these tools is they're color coded. So you can say, hey, let's get the small red one. And they know what we're talking about. So we're going to use a half a teaspoon of pepper. Now remember this. Do we need to taste the pepper? No. No. <laughs> we don't need to taste it. We know what it tastes like. So we're going to level it off. Get it really full to the top. Level it off. And then we're going to pour it right in here. Good job, Paisley. 
And then we're gonna let sister do one teaspoon, a little bigger one, right? Cause that's a half a teaspoon, a little bigger one for our salt. Remember too, this is to taste. A recipe is just the beginning of, of how you like it. So when we taste it, we're gonna see, do we need to add more salt, do we need more, add more pepper? But right now, we're gonna start with this amount. All right, so we've got our salt and pepper. We need a half a pound of noodles. Thank you, Farmer Larry, because he's already made our noodles. He's already boiled our noodles and they're ready to go. And then we're gonna need some cheese. So here's our cheese. And this is what we suggest for all of our cooking friends. That is that you buy the solid cheese. If you buy cheese already grated up, it has a chemical in it that keeps it from separating. So when you buy solid cheese, there's no chemicals to worry about. But then how do you grate it? We're gonna show you how in just a minute. All right, so Farmer Larry's gonna show us the fastest way to grate some cheese. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. This is a piece of equipment, girls, that every kitchen should have. It's a Cuisinart, and it has in here a special blade that will grate your cheese. Now these little knobs are very sharp, so we just gotta put the lid on, because we always say what? Safety, Safety first. first. That's right. And it kinda hops around, so Farmer Larry's gonna hold it. And it's kinda loud, so get ready. Turn put our, it on. Put the cheese in the chute, right? The cheese in. Right? And you gotta use another piece to kind of push it down. Look at it. Oh my gosh. It's fast. Right. <laughs> it's really fast. Sydney, I think we got it. Should yeah. we take a look? Let's do. Mm -hmm. so you gotta be careful with the blade, right? Right, right Paisley? Mm -hmm. And look at how beautiful our cheese came out. Wow. Should we take a taste? Yes. Yeah. All right, everybody oh, get a little chefs. pinch. Sample their food. So we see, so this is a mixture of mozzarella and sharp cheddar. So we're gonna mix up one cup of each. We're gonna shred it. So all you need to do is shred just what you need. No chemicals, easy to do, fun to do. We're ready to rock and roll. Ready? Okay. All right. And we're back, and now we've got our cheese ready and all ground up, beautiful. We've got our salt and pepper, our flour, our milk, and we even made some breadcrumbs to take on top. So we made a little toast, we chopped it all up, and this is gonna be our topping, yum, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing we did is, Farmer Larry, what did you do over there? I've melted some butter, boys and girls, because we're gonna make a roux. Now, roux is a French word, it's spelled R-O-U-X, and it means making a paste out of butter and flour to help thicken. So let's take the flour over. So go on over, Paisley, you can drop it in. We always supervise when we're cooking at the stove because remember, we've got a hot pan, right? So mm -hmm. Farmer Larry's gonna be there to supervise. And the next thing we're gonna put in is our Gordon. salt and pepper. And then I'll do our milk, right? Dump the whole thing, Dump the whole thing yeah. in. Good job. Yay. Do you want to take the salt and pepper over to her? Mm -hmm. So we've got the flour in, and we're going to stir that together with the milk in just a minute. The milk is going to go in to help thicken it as well. So we've got our flour in, we've got our butter in, and we're salt and pepper. And now Farmer Larry's going to bring it over so we can see what a roux looks like. So roux is just thickening up. I don't know, let's see take girls? a peek. All right, it's just thickening up. Yay, thickening up all that butter. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is add the milk, right? We're gonna pour the milk in, and we always teach our children to pour from the, using this little spout, right? So pour carefully. So there you go, two hands with glass, fabulous. Great job. And then we're gonna let that milk thicken up. We're gonna thicken up, and then when it's all thick and gooey, we're gonna add in our Noodles and our cheese, yum. So girls, what we have made is our roux. The milk and the flour and the salt and pepper has gotten gotten thicker. Looks like a creamy soup, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. And Miss Lynn, what do we add next? Now we're gonna add our macaroni and cheese. So here we go, everybody, ready? Put the whole macaroni and cheese in there, woo! And then we're gonna stir it up. Stir it up. And then what is the yummiest part of mac and cheese? The cheese. Cheese. The cheese. All right. So we'll pour the cheese in. Two hands. There you go. Pour the cheese in. And Farmer Larry's going to stir it up. And then we're going to have fun. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put it in this muffin pan and put it in the oven and cook it. So we only cook it for a few minutes, right? We've got our cheese in. Let's take a look. What does it look like now? 
Oh, yummy. Oh my goodness. Great. So we're going to take this. We're each going to get scoopers. These are what we call scoopers. These are just measuring cups. We're going to reach into this pan very carefully and we're going to scoop out a whole lot of mac and cheese, put it in our muffin pan, and then we're going to bake it at 350 degrees. So here we go. Big scoop. Big scoop. Big, really big scoop. Fantastic. Plop it in. Fantastic. Yay. Another big scoop. We're going to fill this pan right up, which just takes a moment, right? And then we're going to add some breadcrumbs on top. We're going to sprinkle the breadcrumbs on top. Yummy. Does that look delicious? The reason we put it in muffin pans is it's really easier for children to work with. If you have any extra that doesn't fit in the muffin pans, you can just put it in a glass Pyrex dish, pop it in the oven with all the rest, and it'll cook just as well. There you go. Fabulous. Yay. Good job. All right. We're almost full. You ready for the breadcrumbs? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to take our breadcrumbs and we're just going to sprinkle them on top, right? And these are just going to crisp up and make it really extra yummy, extra, extra yummy. You don't have to use breadcrumbs, but I think they're kind of good. What do you guys think? Yeah. yeah. All right. Now we're going to pop it in the oven and we'll see how it turns out. All right, the last thing we do is always taste our food. So we always get the kids to have a little bite of whatever we have. We took it out of the oven, it's yummy, but let's take a taste. What do you think? Mmm, that's some cheesy macaroni. <laughs> oh my gosh, so easy, yummy. How is it? Good, thumbs up? Fantastic. <laughs> So, thank you for being here today. In just a moment, we're gonna have some question and answers about kids cooking, so we'll be back in a minute. Well, welcome back. Now we've got a couple of questions from our parents and kids that we've cooked with that we want to share with you. So Farmer Larry, what's our first question? This is from the parent. What recipes are best to cook with kids? Well, what do you guys like to cook the best? Pizza. And? Popsicles. Popsicles, yes. We, we actually make popsicles here. I think the best recipes to cook with are something really simple. You don't just have to bake with kids and make sweets with kids. I think it's really important to make a healthy meal with kids. And so let them cook along with you. If you have a favorite recipe, let them shadow you in the kitchen. And I promise you, before you know it, you can back up and they'll be doing it all by themselves. Parents also, how can I get my child to eat better? Oh boy. That's a big one, right? I know you guys eat everything that's put in front of you. We have a lot of parents that say, my kids don't like this, they don't like this, they're picky eaters, but let me tell you something, if they cook it, they will eat it. So let's try getting some green things cooked by children because they love to cook what they eat. Just try it and see. And finally from the kids, I want to learn how to cook but my mom doesn't want to teach me. Oh, that doesn't happen with you, does it? No. A lot of moms are really busy and they don't want to get their kitchens, kitchens messed up. But you know what? It's okay because we have a, we have a saying here on the farm. We don't mind mess, making a mess because we know how to clean it up. Clean it up. So life skill is really important. Cooking with kids is one of the most important things you can do with your family because they learn so many things from you. Think about cooking with your grandmother when you were little. It was a lot of fun, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't want to lose that tradition. So go out and make something wonderful with your children. And we have fun. We have fun. Farm with food, right? Yes. Yeah. Farm, food, and fun. fun. See ya.